Hello and welcome to Life Adventure Philippines. In this channel, we create videos about travel, adventures, and everything in between to inspire you to get out there and experience nature in real life. In this video, I will be sharing with you our essential pieces of equipment when hiking and wild camping, which are budget-friendly and suitable for beginners like us. So if you're struggling and not exactly sure what you need to bring for your camping trip, we are hoping to help. To start off, let me give you a gentle reminder that to start traveling and getting out there is more important than spending time overthinking about the equipment that you will need. So for example, if you're struggling to get the right bag for you, start with whatever you have. Go for a day hike or a trip which will not require a heavier pack and then take it from there. You'll eventually figure out what you actually need. Remember that through experience, you will generally know what will best suit your needs. So prioritize your goal, which is to go for that adventure. Let's now get into the details. When assembling and organizing your pack, you have to keep in mind that when hiking, it is necessary to keep your pack as light as possible, but at the same time, carrying everything that you need to survive and maintain a level of comfort on a certain adventure. Remember that your own weight will be heavy enough after walking for hours and carrying extra weight will be very dreadful. So the biggest and most common mistake that we do is overpacking with our just-in-case mentality and then we end up compromising the weight. This may be easy to carry at first, but when you start to get tired, every ounce of weight will count and it will be very frustrating. Right, so let's start from the most important piece, the backpack. Our backpacks may not be the best in the market, but it does the job. Mine is made out of polyester, which is heavier and feels more rigid, but it is cheaper. While his is from nylon ripstop fabric. Both are 40 liters capacity and not completely waterproof, but comes with a rain cover. They have chest and hip straps to help evenly distribute the weight of the bag and a mesh back to allow air to flow freely between your back and the bag. There's also a compartment at the bottom, which is very neat, as you do not need to bring out all your stuff just to get into the bottom. And it can be separated by a zipper as well, so you can put your dirty clothes without mixing them with the clean ones. There are multiple pockets and compartments with zippers, which for me is good to segregate small items, making them easier to find. And finally, there's also a compartment for a hydration pack or a bladder. Some manufacturers includes a women's fit version of a certain bag design where uh, they consider a smaller frame and the natural curve of the female body. All in all, picking the right backpack for you can be very tricky. But to make it simple, just pick the right size, find the right fit, and keep both comfort and quality equally in mind. Also remember that quality doesn't always mean expensive. Just be sure to inspect the material well. Try the actual bag in the store loaded with stuff so you'll know how it feels on your back while it's filled and heavy. Then inspect the stitches, the zippers, and the straps, making sure they don't jam easily. And if you're happy with its performance, then that's it. That's the right bag for you. You can also wait and look out for deals and sales to make sure that you're not just paying for the name or the brand, rather the quality. Okay, so your next item would be your shelter, which is your tent and everything that goes inside it, including your sleeping bag and air mattress. Let's first talk about the tent. Important things to consider when buying a tent is number one, the capacity, Next is the type, if it's a standalone tent, the material, the weight, the vents, and the access points or the doors, like if you prefer a two-way access. Ours is a two-man tunnel tent. It is compact and it weighs 1.8 kilograms. It is double-walled, which means it has an inner lining and then the poles are made out of alloy. We have tested this tent in wind and rain on three seasons and it didn't disappoint. Our tent is a semi non-freestanding tent, meaning the tent needs to be attached on a soft ground or it will collapse. The advantage of this type of tent is the weight and the size because it is lighter and more compact because you will carry around just one pole. But obviously, you can just pick it up and move it around once it's been pitched and you cannot pitch it on a solid surface unlike a freestanding tent. We've tried pitching this tent on a rock surface in a cave and we had to anchor the guy lines to the ground using heavy rocks. It was a struggle, but we've managed to find a way. 
Freestanding tents are sturdier, straightforward, mostly has more space, but are heavier and bulkier. So it just depends on your priority and preference. We chose to get the mid-range one so as not to compromise the quality in case things get rough in the mountains, but at the same time, not getting the expensive ones just yet to allow for an upgrade later on. Next item is sleeping bag. A general three-season bag is a good way to start unless you're doing a cold weather camping. Then, you will need a four-season or a winter bag. Just keep in mind that it will be thicker and bulkier. Ours is a mummy type of sleeping bag. Mummy because you're literally wrapped in it and just a portion of your face like your eyes and your nose are exposed for ventilation. Then you can unzip it to convert it into a blanket type if you like. There's usually a label printed on the cover of the bag stating the temperature range it can sustain. So ours, as you can see, can sustain up to zero degree. We didn't opt to buy the thicker ones because we're not planning to go on hiking during the winter time anyways. When it gets really cold in the tent, we just use whatever clothing we have. Sometimes we use our puffer jackets and wool socks to keep us warm. The only advantage of this type of bag for me at the moment is that it is too restrictive. But it's not really a problem because our tent is kind of a little too small for us, so there's no extra space. That's why the sleeping bags are actually keeping us restricted in our own space. Now for the air mattress, it is an important piece of item for us because it doesn't just provide comfort and cushion but also warmth because the space that the air provides separates us from the ground allowing us to keep our own body temperature. There are self-inflating mattresses which requires minimum effort to inflate they are warmer and are lightweight, but of course, more expensive and less cushioned. The airfield type of mattresses, on the other hand, are thicker but are also lightweight and easily packable. The disadvantage is that you need to provide air to inflate it, like by blowing or by using a pump. Although, it shouldn't be difficult as they are made specifically for hiking and outdoor sleeping unless you have breathing problems. Ours has a built-in pump attached to it, but we are actually now thinking of upgrading to either the self-inflating ones or the ones without a built-in pump as the pump itself is heavy and bulky, consuming too much space. These um, air mats come in with a puncture repair kit, but be sure to check the ground for any sharp objects that might puncture your mattress. Next is a thermal sheet. It is another important item for added insulation. Since weight and pack size is our main priority, we opted for the thinnest material. We are using an emergency silver foil survival blanket sheet. We placed this underneath our mattress to help in retaining our body heat. You can also use this type of um, sheet as a blanket and you can use it for emergency, specifically hypothermia. So this type can help save your life. But if you're looking for something thicker, you can search for uh, thermal fleece blankets online or if you want the padded ones for added cushion and benefits. The most common type are the insulated reflective foam mattresses. But then again, these are bulkier and will require more space. In summary, when choosing your sleeping gear, you should consider how important the following factors are to you. The warmth, the weight, pack size, and comfort. Once you know which of these are your priorities, your decision when choosing will become much easier. Next are our secondary packs. This is optional, but it is a personal tip from us that we learned from experience. A secondary pack became an essential for us for two main reasons convenience and security. Convenience because we can easily access the things that we use frequently and for emergency. For example, we don't need to put our heavy bags down while walking or hiking just to get a power bank out or search the whole bag for my asthma puff. And security because at night, we normally place our backpacks outside the tent since we do not have enough space inside. So our sling bag stays safe inside with us. We use these extra bags for different purposes. For Mags, he normally uses another bag, which is a camera bag to separate his camera gears with the rest of our camping gears. And then another one for his main camera attached to his backpack strap, while I use mine for my valuables. I love using a waist bag or a bum bag as it is closer to my body. I'm not worried about pickpockets when traveling, and my important stuff are also easily accessible. We have been given the chance to test out a Kickstarter ultralight sling bags from Instinct London.
the bags that they sent us are an outdoor version of their classic design with a rugged, waterproof, and tear-resistant material suitable for hiking. The Tech & Trek sling bag may appear small but has loads of compartments where you can easily separate small items that tends to get lost easily in your bag. They have a neon inner lining as well so you can easily detect even the smallest thing inside. It is well cushioned to protect your gadgets with a security compartment at the back for your valuables. But the best part for me would be the magnetic buckle that works like magic. It acts as a quick release that is self-securing and it feels robust and heavy duty. The Sakosh Light design, on the other hand, is compact and best for important stuff like bank cards, cell phone, passports, keys, essential medications like my inhaler. And I can easily place it inside my bag at the same time if I don't like to carry it. They are both very light and versatile as you can easily release and loosen as well as tighten their straps to fit your body shape with this easy to adjust pull tabs. You can also wear the bags in different ways such as a sling bag or a waist bag. I sometimes love using mine as a sling bag and either place it in front of my body or behind me as I usually carry my camera with me as well. By the way, these bags are prototypes so the zipper pull will end on the left instead of the right for their final design. The link of their Kickstarter campaign will be in the description box if you'd like to check them out. They also have a minimalistic design for CT travel. So thank you Instinct London for sending these bags over for us to try. So after talking about shelter and bags, let's now go through the cooking equipment. You will need the stove, gas, pot and pans, collapsible cups, lighter if needed, cutleries, and then a sponge, towel, and soap for washing. We normally use butane gas for cooking, but we recently tried the gas fuel. The pros and cons of using a gas fuel are, it is lightweight and compact, but are not suitable for windy locations and not for longer days hike. Butanes last longer and are more powerful, but bulkier and heavier. Now for the food, our main food tip would be eat your fresh food on the first day. The succeeding days, eat the dry, ready-to-eat meals. The ones which needs um, just boiling water to prepare. This is to save space and prevent spoilage. And because fresh food won't last in your pack. We love bringing a home-cooked meal for the first day and then eat the dry ones on the following days. For the clothing, layering and rain cover is key. I'll divide them in three categories so they'll be easier to remember. First, you'll need a set of base layer. These are your thermal, thin material clothing that provide space for layering. Second are your hiking clothes. The best type of um, hiking clothes are the breathable and quick drying ones in case you get very sweaty. You will also need uh, waterproof covers like a raincoat and waterproof trousers. We prefer covers than actual waterproof clothing because we like using our comfortable breathable clothes and then just cover them when it starts to rain and then remove the cover again when no longer needed. Some shirts have also uh, built-in vents for when your core gets really warm. Also, in higher altitudes, sun is much stronger. So breathable um, long sleeves are also a good item for protection. Lastly are your camping clothes. These should be warm and comfortable. These are the clothes that you'll use at night but can be converted to hiking clothes when it gets really cold in the trail as well. We bring clothes that can be used in multiple ways. I normally use a 3-in-1 jacket that has a detachable inner fleece and a water-resistant outer shell that you can both use separately or together. It also has a pack-away hood that you can roll up into the collar pocket. My base layer is sometimes a t-shirt on a warm weather or these uh, breathable long sleeves on a cold weather that keeps me warm. I always have a shirt underneath that absorbs the sweat so in case I need to change, I will only change the shirt inside and still be able to use the rest. I cover myself with my fleece jacket or a puffer jacket at night and then in the trail, I use the outer shell when it rains or use both fleece and raincoat when it's both cold and raining at the same time. I pack all my extra clothes in this travel pouch. It organizes them and keeps them compact. And the best part is that it also serves as my pillow at night. Another important multifunctional item is a headgear and a cap that you can use as a protection from multiple elements like the sun, cold wind, dust, and sweat. Let's now get into our miscellaneous yet still important items. They are usually located in the small compartments of our rucksack or sometimes in our sling bags. For emergency, you will need a whistle. And in the dark, you will need a headlamp or a torch. These are self-explanatory. 
Headlamps though are more useful when camping because you still get to use both of your hands instead of one of your hands holding the torch or the flashlight. Then for personal use, don't forget your toothbrush, toothpaste, an absorbent towel, sunscreen, insect repellent, power banks, cash, ID, or anything that can identify you with your house keys. And during the cold weather, you will need a binny and a pair of gloves. And on the side of the bag, we have our water bottles, tripod, monopod, and walking pole. Water filter is also a necessity to allow you to drink water from the mountain lakes and springs. You can choose between an actual filter and water purification tablets. We are using the Sawyer Mini filter that comes with the water pouch. Very compact and easy to use. You can also check out the gravity filter system. They are well known nowadays. You might want to try that out. Now, for the hiking shoes, it is very important to invest in a good quality hiking footwear. Your feet and legs are the most important part of your body when hiking. You will need a proper footwear with good grip and support because the paths may be well maintained but the inclines and the gravel pathway can be very challenging. You are prone to injury especially when you're tired and the surface you're stepping on is uneven. Quality hiking shoes can save your life in the mountains. Make sure to consider comfort, durability, and the material. Pick one that is breathable, waterproof, and with rubber grip soles. We are both using hiking boots that are breathable and waterproof and has a strong rubber grip sole. The semi-high cut design provides support for the ankles. These tend to be heavy, but the ankle support was our main priority when we bought these. We also have a low cut, lightweight version for the summertime walks. Lastly, always bring a map. Make sure you have both a physical and digital map in case one of them fails. No matter how easy to follow the trails are, it is necessary still for you to bring a map. Anything can happen in the trail. It is best to be prepared and be well equipped. And make sure you've learned how to use them prior to your hike. There are so many things to say with regard to camping and hiking gear. I will be talking all day discussing about each item in detail. So we will probably be making separate videos for each essential gear respectively. So to summarize this video all up, your tent, sleeping bag, mattresses, and your backpack will be the four most heavy pieces of equipment that you will carry. So make sure to make it a priority to study and research about them to find out which is best suited for you. And then for our major tip, if you're a little overwhelmed, we've realized that it's best not to focus primarily on the gear, rather focus on the adventure, on spending time outside. This equipment should help you make your adventure convenient and comfortable. But if the planning and buying will hinder you from starting that trip in the first place, then it is defeating its purpose, right? Just get out there, do not overthink and spend too much time on the equipment. Use whatever you have for the meantime. And remember, it is the trip and the experience that is important. Then through experience, you'll know exactly what items will suit your needs. That's it! Hope this has been a helpful video for you. And if you're interested in travel videos and travel-related contents like this one, don't forget to hit that subscribe button, give us some love, and hit that notification bell because we upload videos every week. Good luck on your next trip and always remember, to travel wisely, travel responsibly, and always leave no trace. Bye! Cut!